Hi everyone! Thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to share everything that I've learned over the last few years on how I've been able to create a sustainable approach to my mental, emotional wellness. Everything is holistic. Everything that we are affects everything that we do, what we experience, the way we interact with the world and ourselves and other people. So what I really want to do here is to kind of assist in a way or help you really help yourself to create a sustainable and tangible hands-on way to have a well-rounded life. Obviously, emotions can be challenging. Sometimes we experience things that we just really don't like. And sometimes it's really difficult to figure out where these feelings came from and how to go from this negative feeling to a better feeling place. We haven't really been equipped with skills throughout our lives to help us do that. We haven't really been told how to nurture, validate, and express our emotions in a healthy way. I mean, whether we're struggling with stress, you know, a mild anxiety, or whether we go to the other end of the spectrum and experience full-blown panic attacks, negative emotion doesn't feel good. And it's really valuable that we take steps to learn how to deal with them. One thing about emotions is they can really get in the way of living a healthy life. I know from experience that my emotions, specifically fear, was so intense that I couldn't even experience love. I honestly did not know how to interact with another person, whether a platonic relationship, a friendship, or a partner, in a way that was healthy and sustainable and loving and nurturing. Even when they were giving me the love that I so desperately wanted, I was so afraid and did not know where the fear came from that I was just miserable almost all the time. It is absolutely possible to clearly identify, label, and become aware of what is going on inside of us so that we can use tangible skills to make ourselves feel better. We don't necessarily have to go through years of expensive therapy or be on medication in order to feel better. And for people like me who have gotten a diagnosis from a mental health professional, sometimes it feels like a death sentence. And I know that feeling where you're like, oh no, you start looking it up on Google and wondering, Am I gonna feel this way forever? And from my experience, that is just not true. I have learned valuable skills over the course of the last two years that I have been able to implement into my life in a way that feels so well-rounded and full and enjoyable, and it's something I never thought that I would have. So with this course, you will have a roadmap that'll take you from where you are to where you want to be, and it'll give you all the little steps in between. Because I know sometimes people say things like, love yourself, or find things to do. And when you're experiencing the craziness of the emotion, it's hard to even get to that point. Like, okay, how do I love myself when I clearly don't even feel like being alive? So what I've done is I've taken different journaling exercises that will help you to get more in touch with your emotions. And that's what I did. It actually comes from a specific therapy called DBT by Marsha Linehan. And so I'm going to use a lot of her worksheets and stuff and things that I have used over the years when I was in uh, residential treatment for two weeks back last year in April of 2018. So I know by experience that this stuff works. So go ahead and scroll down to your PDF downloads and we are going to talk about emotion. So the first thing I start off with is the GROW model, G-R-O-W. And I learned this when I was getting certified for my wellness coaching. And I realized that a lot of people will use this as a way to achieve career goals. But I also think it can be used as a way to become aware of emotions because in my experience, emotion and mental health have been the obstacles to me getting what I want rather than logical, tangible things in life like not enough money. Because for me, I could be making more money most of the time when my emotions and my mental health was better. So the GROW model. Go ahead and download that PDF if you haven't. G, your goal. Dream big. What do you want with your life? How do you want to feel? And not just, don't think just about, you know, the big house or the shiny car. Don't exclude those things either. But how do you want to feel when you get those things? Do you want to feel proud of yourself? Do you want to feel successful, supported, safe, 
nurtured, happy. Take a couple minutes to go ahead and write that down in your journal. You can either print out the PDF or you can just use it as a template. It's up to you. All right, next, reality. What does your life look like now? And be honest. Don't be negative though. State only the facts. Do not place judgment on any of the things that you're doing with your life or where you are at all. Simply state the facts. So for me, for instance, one of my big goals is to make $10,000 a month. And my reality is I am making a fraction of that. And that's not negative. That is simply the fact of the matter. So be clear, be concise, but do not put a negative spin on it because it's just the reality. It does not have to be a bad thing. Oh, options. So what else is possible? With your life the way that it is now, what else is actually possible? And what are the obstacles standing in your way? So this is an important part, the obstacles. When I do this exercise, the obstacles are almost always related to my mental and emotional health because that is what this specific video is about. This specific video is about getting to that foundation for where you want to go and from where you are now. So what are the emotions that are getting in the way? Is it self-doubt? Is it fear? Is it anger? Is it procrastination? What are the feelings? What are the mental and emotional challenges that you've experienced that are stopping you from getting what you want? W, the will. So what do you need to learn in order to achieve what you want? Perhaps you want to be a lawyer. How much school do you have left? Perhaps you want to be in an amazing relationship. What do you need to learn in order to do that? Do you need to learn emotion regulation? Are your emotions getting in the way? Is, are you being too clingy? Um, are you being aloof because you're too scared to really get attached? Be completely honest. This is your private journal. You do not have to tell anyone about it. Just be 100% honest, but again, not negative. Don't put a negative spin on anything. Just be clear, write down only the facts of the matter, and then we can go from there because that's a healthy way to see your life for what it actually is and where you want to go in the future. So now you have the GROW model. You have where you are now, where you want to be in the future, how you want your life to look and feel, and then all the little things in the middle that kind of get in the way of that. So now I want to show you something that I use as a journaling prompt, and I actually carry this with me, this little tiny notebook that I can put in my bag, I can put it in my car, um, and I use this to do this next exercise that I'm going to show you when I'm having a particularly difficult emotion come up. So this is kind of like a timeline. So you can track how you progress along this scale of emotion and then how you can identify the emotion by doing these steps. So the first step is vulnerability. What I mean by vulnerability is, are there any things going on that might make you more vulnerable to having a more intense emotion? Halt. H-A-L-T. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. This is a good way to track any vulnerability factors. If we're feeling one of those things, we are far more likely to react a little more intensely to any given stimulus that might cause an intense emotion. Are you hungry? Are you angry? Are you lonely? Are you tired? Are you perhaps PMSing? Are you drunk? Have you just smoked pot? Are there certain things that will mess with your clarity? Identify that. Write it down in your journal, in your little notebook, on your phone. So the vulnerability factor always affects how you respond. So the next thing is the prompting event. So what is happening that is causing this emotion? What is the situation happening? Write it down, just factually, without any judgment behind it. What just happened? Maybe you got into a fight with your mom. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe you can't really tell. For me, a lot of times I would have anxiety and I didn't know why. So I would create something and I would create an event that would cause me anxiety. And when they're in those moments where you're not sure where it came from, almost 100% of the time, it's coming from the past. Next, the thoughts. So what thoughts are going through your mind? So, okay, you got in a fight with your mom and now your thoughts are, she hates me, she doesn't love me, and she'll never understand me. Write that down. Those are your thoughts and your interpretation. And then you track it next to your biology. So what do you feel in your body? Do you feel heat, 
in your head? Do you have sweaty palms? Do you feel a fluttering in your stomach? What are the biological changes that are occurring for you in this situation? The next thing, your expressions. What does your face look like? Are you frowning? Are you crying? Are you pouting? What is happening with your body and your expressions? Are you clenched? Are your shoulders hunched over? What exactly is happening in your body? Not only your sensations, but also with the way that you're expressing those sensations. And then the next step would be the emotion name. So as you go along and you do this process more regularly, you'll start to be able to identify the emotion behind it. For instance, fear might look like crying and hunched over. And anger will look like clenched fists and screaming. So as you track down the line of things, you'll be able to identify the feeling. What is the feeling underlying all of this stuff that is going on? And like I said in the next video, we will talk about now we've got the feelings, we know how to identify them, what do we do with them next?